Hello everybody, Brios here And for you guys today, I have one of the more uncommon sights on the modern day battlefield But with the August patch bringing in new weapons um, It's time to revisit old builds, old mechs and see how they can be improved with the new weapons And this my friends is one of the more outstanding examples in my opinion Firstly, let me introduce you to the 50 ton inner sphere battle mech, the Crab and the variant I have for you guys today is the Crab 20 um, which has a lot of good quirks for lasers and yep, combined with the binary laser cannon it is honestly quite a beast on the modern day battlefield really versatile except for the fact that it does not jump but before we go into mech lab, let me talk about the Crab itself so the Crab has wonderful hitboxes the, similar to the Marauder style like a torpedo so you can spread damage between the right torso and left torso pretty easily by just twisting your torso being a 50 tonner the torso to speed is pretty darn nice uh, unfortunately the arms are really low slung as you can see cockpit is here uh, but the arms are down below here so heel humping is going to be a problem with the arm weapons and the center torso weapons are pretty low also but once you know the flaws of a mech you can work around it like this mech honestly does better corner peeking so anyway Let's get down to the mech lab itself. So like I said, this is a binary laser build. And once the September patch drops, you can only fire two without generating ghost heat. Unlike right now, because that's a mistake. So this is September patch onwards compliant. Two binary lasers in the low slung arms, a problem like I said. Uh, but with three ER medium lasers in the head and center torso as backup, it gives you a nice alpha of 51. 14 double heat sinks may not seem like a lot, but this build can actually fire 3 alphas without overheating. And with 51 damage per alpha, it is quite beastly in terms of firepower. I use an XL255 engine for a speed of 82.6, uh, so it's really fast for a medium, an inner sphere medium that is, good firepower and pretty darn tanky. The only problem with the XL engine is that the crab, like I said, has good hitboxes. You can spread the damage from the right torso, which is pretty huge from the side and the left torso also but this means people can pick on your torsos easily and once you lose your torso, your side torso with an XL engine, you are instantly dead so you gotta be really careful and play well, a bit more carefully and yeah so but actually what makes this mech fantastic and why I like it so much are the quirks here so as you can see in terms of firepower it's got really nice quirks energy heat 10% reduction allows you to fire 3 times without overheating like I said ER, or rather, IS medium laser range of 15% boost allows the ER medium lasers to hit up to a range of about 467 with skills. Really, really nice actually. Uh, cooldown of 10% allows you to fire faster, and the laser duration reduction of 10% uh, combined with your skills reaches out to 25%, allows the lasers to deal the damage in a shorter period of time. So it's a fast moving, well, fast firing because of the cooldown and the lasers have short duration and interestingly enough it also gets a max heat boost of 15% and an extra consumable so it has 3 cool shots extra heat 15% and all these other skills above in terms of defensive quirks it, other than the hitboxes which actually makes it tanky you get a lot of structure quirks I'd rather have armor but I guess structure is fine because it can soak in damage also from overheat so left torso, right torso 12, center torso 16. Those are the most important. Legs get 12, but that's that's okay. So anyway, let's get down to the skills itself. Like I said, it gets three cool shots if you go for six in the auxiliary. And with the cool shot cooldown, you can fire the second cool shot faster. So this is a rare mech, you can have three cool shots. So yeah, heat is not really a problem on this mech. But it never hurts to have full heat skills for 10.5 reduction in heat and with the range skills of 15%, like I said, the weapons, well, reach out to uh, the ER mediums reach out to a range of 467 meters and the binary is 2552. With the laser duration, like I said, 15% here, it combines with the quirk, 25% uh, laser duration reduction. Always useful if you are running laser bills to minimize the phase time. Full skeletal, full armor hardening. Don't forget the skeletal density nodes boost also the quirks, so it has a lot of structure. More tanky than most people uh, would well expect. 35% structure bonus, 20% armor bonus. Moving along, we have 4 nodes of kinetic burst only. Uh, that's a bit of boost to the acceleration. 
But importantly, I've been taking this a lot recently. Seven nodes of heartbreak, allowing me to decelerate a lot faster, 24.5%. So you can stop and reverse faster, which is really important for like corner peaking and stuff like that. Talking about corner peaking, also five nodes of anchor turn helps. So you can turn around the corner or turn back. Pretty nice. I like mobility nowadays. Operations, like I said, it runs cool. So, well, for a laser vomit build. That's because I also have five nodes of cool run for 10% boost to heat dissipation and five nodes of heat containment to increase the heat capacity by an additional 15%. Don't forget it has that quirk, so the heat capacity is boosted by 30%. Three nodes of hill climb, allowing it to navigate terrain better, always useful. One node of radar deprivation for the audio and visual cue in the cockpit when the enemy loses its lock, kind of a plip plip, so you know somebody targeted you. And advanced zoom, so you, my old 50 year old eyes can see better. Yep, that is true, and I did already say about the auxiliary. So that's it. That's the Battle Crab, the Crab 20. It's a binary laser build. Pretty nice. So I do enjoy this a lot. So anyway, give this a try. Uh, let's get down to the gameplay and I'll show you this Crabby mech in action. Let's go. For the first showcase match, we find ourselves on Free World's Coliseum, the very purple map. And this map isn't too bad now with these magic mushrooms. Um, one thing about this map, it's kind of a paradox. Defensively, it's strong because of its hitboxes with the structure quirks, but also weak because it's XL. So you gotta really manage the incoming fire carefully. Offensively though, it is a dream. Able to fire 3 alphas, like I said, without reaching 100%. And yeah, that's wonderful. So anyway, time to put this mech in action and blast the enemy. Target spotted. Target acquired. Yep, assault spotted. So let's look at the minimap, they have a concentration of lights and mediums here. Always be careful because sometimes they just want to bait you out. New target acquired. I'm always more concerned about the assaults and the heavies. That's because lights and mediums can redeploy really fast. And even though this mech moves at 82, I always avoid chasing lights and mediums too much. Interestingly enough, the enemy lights are staying around this area, Echo 4, to duke it out. Could be a mistake by them. There goes one Locust, running in and out of the firing lines of the whole team. A bit of slow reaction to that Piranha. So I decided to move a bit further behind the friendly team. You are here, Papa. Thank you, Let them blood ass move up a bit. Support it rather than take point. Like I said, this mech doesn't really fare well hill humping. So I'll try to favor corner peeking. One nice target that took a full alpha. New target acquired. Spreading damage. Target Once you take fire, just twist left and right. That spreads the damage really nicely New among target. your target side target tosses. These big boys next to me, like this Kodiak, they are drawing a lot of There's aggro. A catapult, D6. So being too near them, sometimes you get targeted. C6, D6 area. Because they're really covering the location of their Kodiak. So I'm gonna try move one position to the next. New target acquired. Try not to peek from the same position too often. New target Very common acquired. mistake. I do that often too, to be honest. Target spotted. So I'm actually working around these pillars, trading from the left, trading from the right, seeing where my friends are shooting, New target or my acquired. teammates. Oh, nice burn on that piranha, a bit far though. Target spotted. New target acquired. Time to reposition again. If you look at the minimap, I'm actually in the front line, which is not ideal. New target acquired. Ultimately, I'm just a medium. Piranha legs are called target alpha. Spotted. So always remember the damage status of mechs. Make a mental note like Piranha now, Piranha now Lake. Target destroyed. Yep, I got a KMDD somehow. I don't think I did that Target much damage to the acquired. Piranha. Anyway, focus now on the ATM Gargo Delta Five. Yeah, focus now on the enemy assaults which are flanking on our our left. If you look at the minimap, mini you can see the flank acquired. coming in at Charlie 5. Target spotted. As always, never any need to rush. I'm actually concerned about the push on our left. 
But as aggro is drawn from this Gargoyle's front, New target I can pump in a few rounds of fire into him. New target acquired. Caught flea. CT open, Charlie. New target acquired. Target destroyed. 4 2. Target spotted. I'm actually resisting the urge target to just rush him mindlessly spotted. right now. New target Still really close, 4 3. Target destroyed. New target target Not the best burn, but got me a kill assist. Yeah, you can see my arm just hit the ground there. Effectively, only one Yara medium hit that whole line. Oh, bad positioning. Right also rear is open. I twisted badly over the Echo 4 as an assault. Pretty close 5 4. Close matches are the best. New Both teams are trading well. Target Atamoto's a stick. Juliet. Target destroyed. My team holding New Delta 5, Delta acquired. 4. Enemy probing in one location, then the Knicks. New Very good gameplay by both sides. Nobody just rushed into guys stupidly. Even though the enemy likes tried that. Target spotted. Even though th if you look at the minimap, there are targets in Echo 3. Always be situationally acquired. aware. Like I know there's a stone rhino and maybe one or two more on my left. Yeah, Lima is being the stone rhino. I know that of course. Target spotted. I was tempted to go back support Almost the team and to five. Both tors or sides open. Back open. All open. Yep, he goes down. Okay. He was isolated. Tried to fight the unfair fight. There was 3v1 there. Stone Rhino had no chance. Like I said, tempted to go back to support the team on my right. But I opted to take out the Stone Rhino first. The consequence is that now it's 70. We have fallen behind. Thankfully, I'm pretty fresh, except for my structure on the right torso. Playing off this. Timber in front of me. Charge Taking turns to trade. Being a timber, being heavier, and letting him draw a bit of aggro to be Target honest. Ah, oh, my arms hit the ground again. Like I said, hill humping is terrible with this man. Left also is a bit fresher, so after I fire, I twist to present my left. Not a good twist. CT open now. There are those irritating lurks. So they know my position too well. It is 9 9, really close. Look at the minimap. I think my timber friend is still alive. No, oh, he's dead. In the heat of battle, it's hard to tell. Not a good spot for me. Oh, that's my best. My favorite warhorn is the TSP warhorn, by the way. Totally worth it. So I was able to take out that mech there, the charger. The two lights are drawing aggro. So instead of coming in the same location, I'm going to hit Target them from the flanks. Destroyed. Hit and run. But King Hera gets that one. Good That's Great it. Eagle is 11 9. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, enthusiasm. I like enthusiasm. But I can see that. No harm saying he's called. Thanks all who use their comps for using them. Target spotted. <laughs> he likes comps. So anyway. Moving in, GM Hazen down there. I don't think I can get the kill. Nah, that Irby gets the kill. So pretty nice, tight fight. Ah, utterly enjoyable. Caught though. So let's take a look at the damage output of this match. Pretty clutch match, I would like to think. So, 836 damage, 1 kill only, 1 solo, 2 KMDDs. Ah, fairly decent, but rewarded with a nice match score of 649. Ah, let's move on to the next match. So that was a nice tight fight because we always like it tight, don't we? But right now we have another map, the very controversial map, Alpine Peaks. Uh, one thing about this map, it's a medium range trader with the binaries going out to about 5.52. Hey, ER mediums, not much less, but close enough. So kind of a disadvantage, I'm going to trade. But a common misconception is that this map is only for snipers. So you can always trade around the hills. So if you don't have range like me, or mid range, uh, just trade around the hills. So in this particular match, Data was on the same team, so he's taken command, which is good. I like, that. I like playing with Data. He knows the game, he knows how to play. So I do like his calls. So the call was made to defend Hotel 7 Golf 7. You can see the markers on the minimap. 
So working around these hills, I don't need that much energy. But pop starting max uh, having a field day along with some snipers. Thankfully Bravo Lance is listening to the calls. You see this timber right on me? Trading around the right corner. Spotted. When you do trading like this around hills, always be careful of pop tarts. We got a knight here, I6 overwatch. Need assistance. Right torso almost Target open. Spotted. So always be aware of your paper dog. Another UAV. So when I take damage, I should favor my left torso. Oh, classic mistake by the Arctic Wolves. Climbing the hills in the attempt to Target alpha somebody with Target SRMs. Spotted. But it stood there too long, lost the torso. Weapons are really punishing nowadays, got to be extra careful. Not cowardly, but that, just extra careful. Because ultimately, shooting wins games, nothing else. So look at the positioning of my team. Got a few heavies probing on the right side in Fox 7. So instead of joining them, because I'm actually kind of fragile compared to these guys, got to use this heal here. Just a bit behind them. There's data and the blood asp on the left. Not sure what he packs. That Victor is close. One grid away, just get a pop card away. Centurion corner peeking. Like I said, Three with keep, Overwatch, I seven. keep a running catalogue of what you see in your brain. Phoenix Hawk. Quite a few long range boys. Executioner, Jägermeck. Three of them. Don't rotate, don't expose to the sniper. One Niger. So they have three snipers on the top. Acquire. They actually have a nice angle on my position, so I got to be extra careful. Oh, this Phoenix Hawk makes me late. I got two minutes. He's trying to cross the open. Skill shot is side tosses. Hotel 8. Trying to find a good position where I can shoot him without taking return fire. Light go fade. Yeah, this is where this crap shines. Good sustain, decent range. Short duration of the lasers takes out Lanzia Spain. Small, strong, good player, but he makes a classic mistake standing on the hill. All of us make mistakes once in a while. Skill shot, tell. It's just a matter of learning from them. So, standing there is not a good idea. Friendlies are behind the hills, while I stand on top of another hill. That makes me a prime target. As you can see from the minimap, our left flank is weak. Everybody is rotated. Seven left flank. Yeah, rotated to the right. So I made a call to look out for the left flank. I'm not going to win the trade with that night gear unless it's a potato player. So waiting for a few reinforcements. New target acquired. Look at the minimap. Two guys, friendlies, have moved a bit to the left. Like I said, not gonna win the trade against a Niger. Right torso is already open. Hence me favoring facing my left torso to the enemy. There's a Niger hotel. Oh, that's a skill shot. Well, some guys there. Hotel 7. There is that Niger. He's yeah, Ni that Niger right at the edge of this slope. He's happily pop starting and blasting everybody. Thankfully, team listens. One assault Hotel 7 also. Be careful. Two friendly heavies and a light uh, heading to his position. Dead Niger getting greedy. He pops a UAV. Gotta take it out. Yeah, but I leave it to my teammates. One thing good about this team, they are trading really carefully. And I only move around a bit too much if a friendly moves together with me. That's really called sharing armor. People mistake rushing in stupidly with sharing armor. Sharing armor is when the team advances, like right now. I move with them. Or in this case, I decide to pull down a bit. Friendly timber far forward. Friendly Uzil behind, I think. Or grasshopper. It's time for me to share armor and literally move up with them. So the enemy has three targets at least to choose from. That literally means sharing armor. I'm reversing because acceleration of max is faster. If I need to move away, 
I normally just accelerate forward. New target acquired. Yeah, waiting for the people. Yep. Skill issue. That's what happens when you pop card in the same location too often. Enemy pre-aims. And you literally just like the big somebody help me with the blip hotel eight. Literally just pop tarts into the rectangle. Oh poor guy. Never mind. Skill. He had told me that for this. 7 3. Honestly, the enemy team was the one throwing this match. All we did was hold a good location. Now the initiative is with us. Those three snipers. Yeah, we do. Those three snipers at the back are a problem. Target spotted. New target spotted. Oh, look, uh, because there's seven. Look around. Yeah. Destroyed. Whole bunch of us just running to the edge of the hill and blasting. This is where I get greedy. Push, please. <laughs> yeah, just greedy. I like the final push. Game is definitely one at eight. Three. So just run in. Come on, go hold it. Get the kills. Go, go. Give them. Give the enemy a chance to shoot because otherwise it's a really bad stop. New target acquired. On Piranha? Golf. In the 7 this one. Harassing. Can I get a kill? Nah, Emro kills himself. And that's it. So good trading. Defensive strat. Until we have a 7 3 advantage. Then we push forward to get rid of the snipers. Using the hills to protect ourselves from snipers. After all, people complain about, you know, bloody snipers, goddamn snipers, blah blah blah. But if the snipers never get a chance to they shoot can? you. That is not an issue. Oh, I didn't notice that guy. Target oh, that's destroyed. it. He goes down. So overall, a good, good team play. I enjoyed this match. So I hope you enjoyed the showcase of how to play this crab, positioning and how to target the enemy. 809 damage, 4 kills, 2 of them solo and 2 KMDDs. 13 components, really decent. And rewarded yet again with a super nice match call of 603. So that's it ladies and gents for this video on the dual binary crab 20. With the new binary lasers, this crab 20 really is a beast on the battlefield, albeit with an XL engine. But anyway, I hope you guys try different builds with the new weapons and give new or old max a new leash of life. So till then, I will see you on the battlefield and stay stock free. Ciao!